if you are in an organization and there are problems, it's usually the case uh, that the people uh, in the organization are suffering from that. So that means right. um, uh, they, they want to have problems resolved. Welcome to Process Pioneers, the show that takes a deep dive into the minds of decision makers, key influencers, and process experts who are pioneering the world of everything process. Welcome to another episode of Process Pioneers. My name is Daniel Rayner. I'm the host of Process Pioneers. And in each of these episodes, we get to sit down with BPM practitioners. So you've probably, if you've been following the series along uh, for a while, you, you would have he heard the opening, you would have heard the introduction, you would have seen and, and heard what we talk about. So I don't want to spend too much time on, um, on, on stuff that you, you already know, but it's a show about business process management and how people People are putting that into practice um, for their organization. Um, and today I have the absolute privilege of sitting down with Jan Mendling. Now, Jan is a professor at Humboldt University in uh, Berlin. He's also the co-founder and head of partnerships at Nordaya, um, which they, they are a consulting company, I believe, that has a, specializes in process mining, uh, is what I understand. But um, Jan, thanks for um, joining me. Yeah, thank you very much. Happy to be on the show. <laughs> and I know that you uh, you also speak five uh, languages, um, from what I can see. Um, so, but we'll we'll keep this uh, episode in English. Uh, Let's I think, keep uh, it in English. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, um, what our audience normally likes to understand from our guests is when were you first introduced to the topic of business process management? Did you kind of fall into this topic? Um, did you do formal training in this topic? And then take us on a journey leading up to what you're doing today yeah um it was like roughly 20 years ago um uh, i started to get in touch with uh, process topics uh, when i was uh, doing my studies um back then was there was a small city in germany called trier and uh, one of our professors um he um he joined us there and he had a background um um with uh, all the stuff that uh, back then IDS Share was doing. Um, yep. And um, uh, he was one of the guys uh, who uh, invented uh, the event-driven process chains. So the, um, the process modeling concepts that were heavily used, particularly in Germany in the 90s and in uh, the year um, 2000 to 2010. And then at some stage soon, uh, BPMN took over and internationalize that topic a bit more. So, uh, well, his name is Markus Nutgens, and um, uh, he was the guy introducing us at the studies uh, to all of these process concepts. And, uh, well, I, I got hooked up with it. <laughs> That's great. That's good. And then, uh, obviously, over the last 20 years, um, you have been, I guess, surrounded by business process management, both, I guess, from an academic um, perspective, but also working with organizations. Um, how, uh, I guess, tell us a little bit about that journey and how, how have you seen business process management evolve over the years? Yeah, uh, so um, from, a, from a practical point of view, um, back then when we were, uh, when we are in our studies, um, it was uh, very strongly a discussion around um, a process uh, analysis, process understanding and process documentation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, at, back at that time, um, it made a lot of sense that there was this strong emphasis because many organizations back then started to introduce ERP systems mm -hmm. and uh, they needed to create an understanding uh, which was bigger than uh, say the, the sphere of control that you usually have in a single uh, department. Right. So for that, for that, it was very important uh, to analyze processes um, at a larger extent from an end-to-end -end perspective in order to reap the benefits uh, that such a system would provide. Mm. Um, so that changed um, a little bit um, with, um, with the last uh, five to 10 years. Uh, um, ERP systems have become commodities uh, for, for many organizations. Um, and uh, they have been, let's say, very stably being used over the last 20 years, such that um, this has become infrastructure for many companies. Uh, they have yes. process documentation, they have these systems in place, um, and uh, they are becoming more and more aware uh, over the last couple of years that there is a lot of data 
uh, in these systems and that there is a lot of knowledge that can be extracted from these systems, uh, such that many companies uh, are now fo focusing much more on the analytical side, uh, yes. introducing technologies like process mining uh, in order uh, to understand how they uh, can get a better visibility of what's really happening. Uh, and by the help of that visibility, uh, being faster uh, to set measures that help them uh, to become more efficient and more effective. So um, um, that has definitely uh, led to a change also in that regard that um, let's say uh, um, some of the organizations are now giving less emphasis to, to documentation because um, uh, because the process visibility uh, is now also um, better available through these analytical tools uh, and directly yes. visible out of the systems. Uh, so yes. that, is a, that is a big change uh, from my point of view uh, over, over the last uh, around five years. Yes, right, right. And I guess it's, um, it, it's, it's showing the organization what's actually going on as opposed to hypothesizing and having those um, workshops where you bring all the stakeholders in um, I guess it removes all of the need to sort of debate um, what's actually going on in the process here. Right. So uh, it becomes less a matter of opinion um, mm. um, because uh, well, you, you can see what's happening in the data and um, uh, not only, let's say, it's not about the process structure alone, uh, but um, well, who has process models uh, and who has created work, has done workshops where you actually... Uh, annotate how many orders run through these and these paths in these models. So uh, that is a very, uh, it's a very important uh, piece of information uh, that you don't, that you don't consider when you document processes. Yeah? Mm. So, but it's, it's extremely important uh, when you try to understand what's going on and, and when you try to analyze uh, and simply by having that quantitative information, uh, it brings you uh, onto a completely different level when you try mm. to improve something around these processes. Yes, right, right. And um, I guess when when talking about process mining and the, these analytical tools um, over here in Australia, um, I would say that, um, or over this side of the world, I would say that there's a lot of, um, I have a lot of conversations where um process mining feels like it's it's much further down the path for them it's much further in the future for them um, that you know some of these organizations don't even have documented processes so they mm -hmm. it, there's I guess there's this thinking or this thought that we need to you know we, we haven't even done like process documentation yet um, we need to get it on top of this before we dive into process mining. So I guess before we lose some of our listeners, before we lose some of our, the people that will be viewing this, um, what are some foundations that you, that um, what are the foundations that, that need to be in place before you adopt process mining? Um, what are the bare minimums? Um, what, what, when, when should you be looking into technology like process mining? Is it only for large um, mature organizations or, or is there benefit for organizations at, a, at an early maturity level when it comes to process management? Right, so um, BPM in general requires infrastructure. Yeah? So and, um, uh, that infrastructure uh, that you need uh, for doing BPM uh, is on the one hand um, an infrastructure that relies on, um, on certain systems being in place. Hmm. Uh, so uh, it means any company who has some sort of ERP system or uh, maybe who have a system where may, most of their operation runs, but they do not call it ERP system. But if, if there's some cent central system that supports their, um, um, their major business functions, um, there's something there. Um, there's something to start with. And um, uh, that is... Um, uh, that implies a little bit uh, also that, um, let's say, that um, the analy analytical uh, approaches um, may be applicable for organizations that have uh, reached a certain size. Uh, so um, if you have a 20-person uh, 
a company, um, well, let's say there is still some benefit in doing this, but uh, let's say the benefit may be smaller if you have a large organization where uh, simply um, the distance uh, between uh, the, the directors and actually the, um, the operations on the ground uh, is, uh, is larger. Uh, so, um, uh, but um, these days uh, I, I see that um, any organization of a certain size has such, has such a system in place uh, and um, all of them are facing the challenge of, uh, uh, of organizing themselves uh, in, a, in a better way. Uh, so that is a good point to start with. Um, and, uh, but clearly then when you start actually um, uh, opening the box and trying to understand what is in those operational systems, um, you can in parallel or you have to in parallel uh, create some uh, process understanding. So that means uh, uh, by, um, by setting things up, uh, by identifying which data you want to extract, um, you also establishing process knowledge such that, um, let's say, when you think of it of, uh, as a process mining project, um, you, in parallel, also create um, insights and documentation uh, that can be then later extended uh, and integrated. Um, but in the end, uh, of course, when you, when you want to then manage your processes, you also need some documentation side, I think, yeah. Yes, yeah, right, right. But you can actually start in parallel with this. Yeah? So uh, mm. um, if there is commitment uh, in the company that, um, that, that they understand the benefits of um, uh, doing some evidence-based analysis, um, it's not only insights uh, that emerge, but also uh, you're also creating documentation in parallel, which can be then be a seat for a more systematic documentation approach as well. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. And um, I think that evidence-based analysis is um, so important because, um, you know, that I guess there's a different, there are different purposes or reasons um, but behind different processes. Um, mm -hmm. And some, some of them are, uh, some processes are the diff could mean the difference between life and death. You know what I mean? Like if you're talking, mm -hmm. if you're talking about hospitals or, um, or organizations where, where there's a lot at stake, uh, these processes mm -hmm. are vital and you need to understand what's actually going on um, so that you can improve the, I guess, desired outcome of that process. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, the need for understanding those processes is indeed vital. Um, not only for hospitals, well, maybe for hospitals, it's vital for the customers, uh, but um, uh, let's say uh, for other organizations, it's at least vital for um, securing the future of the company. And um, yes. that is, for, for many directors, that's vital enough. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's right. And um, I guess when, ad when adopting uh, process mining, um, what are the biggest challenges an organization uh, may face? And I, I think it, it is good to talk about the challenges because people need to be prepared. We don't want people um, jumping onto process mining because it's the, the latest, flashiest technology. We want them to be aware of and to make sure that they adopt it and implement mm -hmm. it well. So what, what are the challenges that, that could arise when adopting um, process mining? Uh, let, let's pick one thing, and I think that is important. So um, I've seen at stages uh, that uh, there are partially unrealistic expectations of a new technology in general. You know? right. So, um, um, and for that reason, it's important um, to make uh, your conversation partners understand what is it exactly that we are talking about. So um, with process mining, uh, one of the things that, um, let's say, um, one of the wrong uh, interpretations uh, that I have partially seen is, uh, let's say, um, uh, a hope that, well, we plug in this technology and uh, we push a button and then things work automatically. And uh, <laughs> that is, uh, uh, well, there will be a great product if it would work, <laughs> be working like this, but, uh, but it, that's, that's completely not realistic. Yeah. So uh, um, it's, um, I'd say it's a, it's a it's a very important puzzle piece of a specific management approach that is evidence based, uh, but that also uh, is a management approach uh, that uh, builds on capabilities that 
you can do something with these insights. Yeah. So um, um, uh, insights are great, but um, uh, well, an insight is only halfway, no, not even halfway through uh, to have something changed. Yeah. So, um, yes. uh, and if, um, if you are uh, set up in your organization that um, you don't have the tools, you don't have the skills, you don't have the budget, then actually to change and improve your processes, um, well, then you have insights, but um, nothing changes. Yeah? So yes. uh, that is important that um, uh, that uh, you have uh, you have actually uh, this pipeline from insight to uh, actual change uh, established, and uh, mm -hmm. there are a lot of other capabilities that are required uh, that uh, that go beyond process mining and. Um, um, if these capabilities are there, um, uh, then process mining is the right tool uh, to, uh, to speed up the process of getting an insight and speeding up the process of getting something changed. Um, but if these capabilities are lacking, um, then, then yeah, it's, uh, it, doesn't, it cannot unfold its benefits. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I think um, organizations are driven by people. It's the people that run and run organizations and, and make mm -hmm. up all the many moving parts. And, and um, if you don't have buy-in from the senior leadership down to the, the process participants, um, you know, you're going to face resistance and you aren't going to get maximum value out, out of the technology. Yeah. I think it's even more than management support. Um, so um um, I've recently seen that um, in another organization uh, in Germany that um, um, that the management support is um, well, it's not enough. Uh, so um, with with that organization that I'm thinking of, um, it, re it really boils down. Um, it is really uh, an everyday effort of um, the top management. And um, that's, uh, that sounds a little bit different than actually management support, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, so uh, management support sounds a bit like, yeah, well, you have, you have to approve it. Yeah, so, but uh, it, it's not like this. Yeah? So you really have to, really as a, um, as a director, as a, mm -hmm. as a board member, you have to, invest uh, on an everyday basis effort to push it yeah so um uh, and that could actually come down uh when, when things are moving um not exactly in the direction that you desire it uh, that you have to actually every day join these uh, daily stand-ups for instance uh and um to make everybody understand that this is top priority that is super important and uh that we have to overcome uh, the silo of thinking um, and uh, that we have to create a solution um, for the benefit of the future of the whole organization. Yeah? So mm -hmm. um, uh, it's really um, a top management push uh, that is needed yes. uh, because for many processes, um, let's say if you, if you go up, uh, well, if you consider all of those being involved in the process uh, and you take that set of people and uh, you, you look at the organization chart and you try to find the person uh, who is, let's say, the lowest in the hierarchy where everybody is under that, uh, you typically end up with the CEO. Yeah, so Because um, it's, it's really reaching, uh, branching out into all kinds of lines of reporting. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, the most top person has to be after it. Yes, yes, right, right. And um, I guess when trying to um, get that support or that buy-in, um, a, big, a big question um, that the CEO or that the C-level executives will want to know is, um, well, what are the tangible value? What's the ta tangible be benefit? What's the tangible value it's going to bring the organisation? Um, we're, we're not about just, you know, playing with the latest technology. Um, we, we are only focused on one thing about, you know, growing this um, organization and make sure and what, make, making sure we're hitting our strategic objectives. Um, so do you have some examples of where you've seen an organization adopt process mining um, and it has delivered significant value? I, I think, um, you know, we, we can talk about process mining in theory, but I, I think something that the audience, uh, our audience loves to hear are some stories or examples of where, you know, th this organization adopted it and, um, and here's a little sort of mini case study on, on what the outcome was. Um, so do you have anything you can share with us? 
I think uh, one of the uh, beauties of uh, process mining is that, uh, let's say, consider a larger process, many uh, departments being involved um, and um, uh, what's, uh, what you have, let's say, a fair chance uh, of uh, what can happen if something goes wrong uh, and you have an organization uh, with silos. Well, um, first thing to solve problems is um, uh, blame others. So it's not me, it's Daniel. <laughs> How did it come with this problem to me? And uh, I'm doing a great job and uh, it's Daniel. And so, <laughs> and, uh, well, well, what's your first response to that? I don't believe this. Yeah? So uh, uh, right, no, right. It's, it's Jan, it's, it's not me. Yeah? So uh, yes, um, um, you, see, you see very quickly things running into such blame games. Um, uh, and these blame games... Um, can sustain a much better in an environment of transparency. Uh, so, um, and once you uh, once you create transparency, um, the whole discussion changes um, um, because it, it, it's it's not anymore a discussion of opinion. But you can see uh, where in the process uh, things take, for instance, long. Yeah? So, and. Um, and uh, once you discover uh, that it is actually at that stage of the process uh, where typically errors occur, uh, where things uh, are ping pong back and forth, um, where things are delayed, um, um, with these insights, uh, it's, it's often not that a creative task anymore to think uh, about what, um, uh, what can be done to solve that problem. And um, uh, in particular, um, uh, this is also what I think is cannot be underestimated. Uh, you start talking about real specific problems. And um, um, I've also seen organizations where, where people were, were uh, actually um, walking around with solutions in their mind um, and, um, uh, and then starting pro searching problems for their, uh, for their solutions. Yeah. So, um, uh, but um, that, is, that is actually a very tricky thing. And, uh, uh, one of the one of the examples that I often uh, put up in um, in my slides uh, to, um, uh, to to highlight to my students that um, 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 you any change that you then implement in the process um, is actually based on a hypothesis. Yeah? So, um, um, well, you make things faster at that stage of the process, and of course, uh, your expectation and assumption is that uh, all of the rest of the process. Um, remains positively unaffected uh, by this, uh, but uh, right. sometimes it's not the case. And uh, mm. there was a um, a nice example. Of, um, uh, I, I cannot trace it back where where uh, where that story comes from, but um, um, it's uh, it's kind of let's say common wisdom in a certain sense. And there was a bank in Germany um, uh, that had a consumer loan process, uh, and this uh, consumer loan process suffered from the fact that customers didn't like it because. Um, it's a long time ago. It, it took one week uh, until they actually got uh, the approval or the denial of a of loan request. Right. And so the project team actually come up, uh, came up with the hypothesis. Well, well, maybe we should actually speed up the process uh, and then the customers will like it. And um, that, that idea wasn't wrong, uh, but um, uh, it had some interesting uh, side effects. So th what they did actually, uh, they... Um, they started to, to implement the process, speeding it up, um, um, such that uh, this process could now be run uh, with um, more or less of an instantaneous approval or denial. And uh, back at that time, that was revolutionary. Mm, right, guess what right. happened? Uh, customers were not ready for that. Yeah? So uh, now these guys were coming up with their loan requests and... Uh, and um, Half an hour later, they got a yes and no, and um, uh, and uh, those guys who got a yes um, were maybe well positively uh, positive, but also partially um, overwhelmed in asking, "Oh, has this all now been ready to check? Is this all safe for me?" Yes, right. Okay. Um, and those guys who actually got a got a quick reject. Uh, so guess how that feels? Yes. <laughs> so they. Um, <laughs> Uh, customers were upset. You, you didn't check this properly. Yeah? So, right. Um, okay. So um, uh, 
there was a funny way out. Uh, so um, they actually collected all the data. Uh, they waited. Uh, well, they took the decision, but they waited one day to uh, let the customer know that it was easy to fix. But uh, um, you see that uh, any of the changes that you introduce, uh, you make on a certain assumption, and then you actually have to follow up. Yeah. So mm. and uh, this is the nice thing about process mining. Mm. Um, that uh, when you have uh, an integrated approach with your systems, um, uh, you would see actually that um, that if the effects that you expect materialize or not. Mm. And this is very important because um, organizational work is complex and uh, mm. in particular when it actually then involves external partners, uh, suppliers, customers, etc. Uh, we do not exactly know if well, if, if our expectations are met. So mm. we have to check this. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, we just like doing, I don't know, it's like uh, it's driving uh, without headlights in the night. Yeah. So um, uh, we, we need to create this uh, visibility. Yeah? And, yes. Um, in this way, you can much more systematically um, invest your effort. Yeah? So uh, if you do not know what's going on, you have to analyze the whole process. Yeah? So uh, if you have some visibility and know, oh, okay, it's at this interface. Um, yes. Uh, it becomes much less effort because the passage that you're looking at is much smaller um, and uh, you're much quicker to identify what you really have to do. Yes, yes, right, right, right. Yeah, I think that um, obviously being able to simulate um, your hypothesis and, and I guess what, what the expectation uh, would be how the process is going to play out, the closer you can understand what's going to happen before it actually happens, um, the better. But um, yeah, I guess it's like um, traditionally that there, there's, there's, there's been a lot of trial and error, you know, we, we, we yeah. don't, we simply don't know how this process is going to play out until we put it into, put it into action um, because there are some, I guess, factors that we may not have considered. Obviously, you, you want to try and try and consider everything, um, but when the rubber hits the road, um, it could be a different story. Um, there could be other things that, that are playing into effect and, I guess, exhibit A, the, the story that you just shared about the, um, the dissatisfied customers for getting such a, a quick rejection. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And when we um, we're talking about getting buy-in from the, the senior leadership, C-level executives, when we're talking about, about getting buy-in and sponsorship from uh, the process participants or the process performers, the, the ones that are actually doing the work. I mean, you, you mentioned change management there a number of times where if we're going to be changing this process, um, you know, who, who are the ones that are actually, unless it's a robot that's going to be doing the process, in which case um, you, you wouldn't expect too much resistance from a robot um, or not, <laughs> not at this stage at least. Um, but we're, when working with humans and with people, when working with um, with Sebastian, who's been doing that pro this process for the last 10, 20 years, and we're coming in saying, hey, Sebastian, so we we've used this machine. It's actually discovered a better way for you to do your process. You have to do this now. Uh, how do you bring these people along for the journey um, so that there isn't any resistance? Because uh, I could imagine that um, sometimes people would be like, oh, what, is the, what does a machine know? Like, what does a robot know? Like, I'm the one that, that's actually doing the work. Um, I'm the one that, that knows what, what should be, hap um, how this process should be done or carried out. Um, how do you, I guess, manage people um, and bring them along for this journey? So I think um, uh, this matter of resistance, when I, when I re-look at, uh, let's say, practical examples, maybe it has a little bit of a different flavor because um, um, if you are in an organization and there are problems, it's usually the case uh, that uh, the people uh, in the organization are suffering from that. So that means right. um, uh, they, they want to have problems resolved. Uh, and um, uh, it's usually that, um, um, let's say, it's usually that, let's say, um, the dissatisfaction emerges when this is all going too slow. Um, also an organization that, um, that I've been recently in touch with, um, they are um, introducing a new ERP system and um, um, it's going too slow. <laughs> People are frustrated because uh, uh, they do not, uh, well, they feel that it should have been yesterday that all of this is now working. And, uh, right. um, so it means the dissatisfaction actually um, 
does not or does not always stem from the fact that there is let's say an unwillingness that something has changed but it is actually um an observation that things should be actually changing much faster because uh, yes. um when fe- when things are when pro- problem uh, processes are badly organized um uh, um, you better want to have the new process tomorrow. Yeah? So uh, that, that is one of the things. And uh, um, the problem is then, um, uh, I mentioned earlier that, um, that process management and uh, handling processes require some infrastructure. In particular, um, much of what we then actually um, do touch upon is actually infrastructural work. And uh, infrastructure work takes, takes time. And um, that means we... Uh, we have to um, we have to work with this potential dissatisfaction um, that uh, that people have the feeling uh, a lot of effort is spent and they do not yet see the benefits uh, and that simply comes from with the length of the journey yeah? so uh, um, uh, so it means um, for, for that it's important that um, uh, that um, that the roadmap um, is um, and the timeline is um, sustainable and um, that people have the feeling, um, well, uh, we are moving ahead along our timeline. And, mm-hmm. um, uh, and um, let's say the opposite is a feeling of, uh, well, um, everything is getting delayed. Things are getting more complicated. Things don't work. Um, um, that, um, uh, that, is, uh, that is shaking the trust that it actually comes to a good end. Uh, yes. So, and, uh, uh, and once you have a discussion, uh, once a discussion starts, whether we should continue with this or not, um, yeah, you, you don't want to go there. Yeah? So um, that means that, uh, they, they must have, uh, the people in the organization must have a clear picture of um, um, how it will be in the future and when, at what point in time, uh, this, uh, this change has actually, uh, com- has actually completed. Um, so making that visible, then uh, how it will be in the future. I think this is also uh, often when, uh, let's say, these bigger infrastructural projects are happening. That um, um, it's not really clear um, what uh, this will mean uh, for my job. Um, to make it really visible uh, to to the people involved, uh, that they have an understanding. Well, currently you print out these forms, you sign it, you bring it to the postal mail, and um, it takes days till the next person picks it up. Um, in the future, you're getting an email uh, with all the data that you need. You have to think for a minute and then you click yes or no. Uh, and then your job is done. Yeah. So, um, mm. uh, and this is what, uh, what much of the benefits are, of course, uh, with this tedious works uh, where, uh, let's say, the, um, uh, the content of the work uh, is not much more than uh, a few f- few seconds to think, uh, uh, but actually the the whole setting up and making it work requires you to look into uh, paper folders uh, to pull out some uh, some uh, some files uh, uh, and just like getting all the stuff together uh, that you need to making it work uh, and mm. then. Uh, a task that actually should take uh, 10 seconds takes 10 minutes. Um, and, mm. um, um, and this is what much of, uh, what much of the benefits are then actually for organizations. It's, it's minimizing the effort for the things that you have to do. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. And uh, that, that was, that was, um, I guess leads into my next question about what, how you've noticed the take up of process mining or the adoption for process mining. Um, is it for, um, is the main driver, would you say the main driver is revenue generation? Would you say it's conformance checking? Would you say it's complying with, with um, laws and, and regulations and policies? Or what would you say, what, what's the, the current biggest driver of, of um, the, the, the take up or the adoption of process mining? Mm. Let's say, um, uh, well, there are different stakeholder groups. And um, the nice thing is that um, uh, even though they have different interests, um, once you start talking about process, many of these different interests uh, are actually uh, lined up into the same direction. So that means uh, on the one hand, uh, let's say from a financial or a senior management perspective, it's about effort, which means actually about costs. 
Um, but associated with that is also when the process is better organized, um, it's also more reliable, uh, it's, um, it's faster, uh, and um, the quality is usually also higher. I see that also. Um, when you think about, uh, let's say, uh, in every organization, you have one or the other process that works via email. And um, think of all these situations where, I don't know, um, you trigger something and you think something is happening. And uh, after one week, you, s you start thinking, what happened to this? And then uh, you start pick up picking up the phone or you start writing other emails. And then somebody says, oh, oh I forgot this. Or uh, I printed it out. It's in my office. Or uh, um, oh, that email slipped my attention. And um, um, all of this cannot happen if you have, uh, if you have integrated systems uh, behind your processes. Yeah? So, yes. um, um, and uh, that means also then actually for the people in the organization, um, it's it's about uh, a frictionless, reliable way of working, and um, mm. uh, I I tend to believe that everybody in an organization is enjoying that. Uh, where just mm. like uh, where you where you want to get things done, you want to get problems solved, and uh, mm. it's just happening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I guess. Um... As long as it's implemented well, uh, I think that there's probably going to be some organizations that jump on uh, technology because they see their competitors doing it, um, that they don't set it up well, they don't use it properly, and then it becomes another one of those things that they, you know, they had a crack at, they, they gave it a go, um, but it, it didn't deliver results or didn't deliver value because it wasn't used correctly, I guess. Mm. And... Um, when we look at the last uh, 18 months, obviously the um, the whole world has kind of been disrupted disrupted along with, you know, organisations and the people in them um, and our, our way of life um, has, has been disrupted as well. Um, how has, um, how, have, how have you seen process mining play a part in this, in the last 18 months? I think that, um, you know, biz, uh, having an understanding of your business processes um, from what I perceived, um, uh, uh, grew, uh, I guess, how do you say it? Um, went up the priority ladder um, because businesses understood, hey, our processes are changing. Um, well, they need to change. We need to understand what's going on so we, un we can understand how to pivot and adapt. How has process mining played a, a role in the last 18 months um, when it comes to COVID and how COVID has disrupted a lot of organisations? Right, so um, I think process mining... Um is let's say not directly affected because it's a way of looking at the processes. Uh, but now this, let's say this specific period of time is let's say maybe even more interesting. So, uh, and of course, uh, let's say uh, with process mining, uh, you can then uh, see things uh, that are, uh, that are maybe even more interesting because, um, um, because these times have put a lot of stress uh, on many organizations. Um, and um, the nice, well, let's say, the, let's say from an analytical standpoint, uh, the nice thing is that um, um, some of, uh, let's say, um, it's like it's like with a picture. So uh, the contrast is much sharper. Yeah? So um, uh, when lo then looking at that data, um, you see um, you see much more clearly uh, where the stress points in the processes are and. Um, uh, in this way, uh, this has also been uh, a chance for many organizations um, because um, at some stages it was it was so striking uh, where uh, these stress points are that uh, no analytical tools were required to uh, to actually feel it and discover it. And so, right. and um, uh, and this is what many organizations then actually did uh, addressing those uh, stress points um, and. Um, and um, often it, it has become a boost of, um, of the digital in many companies. And um, um, we're now able in many organizations to, to work from home um, to, uh, to uh, I don't know, doing our everyday work uh, with our colleagues um, and without being in the same place. And um, uh, for, many, for many companies, that's, uh, that's just uh, completely new. And, uh, mm. um, 
Uh, so um, that means indeed things are changing and um, many workarounds were introduced um, uh, at, at some early stage. Um, and uh, what I've seen uh, from, um, uh, from the university in Vienna that I've been working with, uh, uh, it's then actually very funny and interesting to see how, uh, let's say, um, how little effort is usually required for, uh, for a process to make it work. Because um, uh, those things that you did on paper um, then didn't work anymore. And uh, now, if, if you want to find a workaround, um, um, you, you have a process where just like some information is quickly forward via email, um, which used to be a, um, a big paper file process <laughs> in the past. Uh, and you wonder, well, why haven't we done it always like this? <laughs> so, yes. Um, and I think that that's now uh, for many companies actually the big question. Um, so what of these new procedures, what of these new routines uh, we want to maintain? Uh, or at least partially, man, uh, partially maintain, um, because uh, it created some visibility about um, some extra work th that we're doing, which is maybe not that required. Yes, right, right. And when you look to the the future um, of process mining, the next two, three, five years, um, how do you think it's going to evolve over this time? Um, obviously, um, I'm assuming that more organisations are going to adopt uh, process mining and are going to, I guess, more use cases are going to be discovered uh, for this technology. But what do you see over the next two, three, five years? And, and where, where sh would you recommend or encourage um, organisations to be focusing on when it comes to process mining? I think it's, um, we see that um, uh, these systems um, are um, deeper and deeper integrated uh, with other systems. So uh, um, if we look 10 years back, uh, process mining tools were mostly standalone and analytical tools, let's say some, uh, let's say some process Excel, if you like. Um, um, but we see um, uh, how it is implemented now uh, in many companies. Uh, it's very much done uh, with um, uh, with uh, with the awareness that um, creating continuously a visibility over those processes um, has much more benefits than just doing it in a one shot way. Yeah, so, um, and that means in particular for uh, the ERP vendors. Um, um, we see that they uh, more and more uh, realize the benefits of this technology. Uh, because it, it is making their ERP systems more valuable. Yeah? So right. um, uh, when you look at um, SAP's strategy in this regard, uh, uh, since they acquired uh, Signavio, um, um, uh, these are important tools uh, to actually to create a process understanding on top of those systems. And um, mm. this is where the benefit for the customers is. Mm. Uh, it's uh, Remember in the 1990s, we talked about these... Um, a productivity paradox. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, in the 90s, companies were investing uh, in IT. Uh, and if you look at it from a statistical macroeconomic perspective, um, there was no impact visible. And uh, it's a little bit like um, um, you're trying to improve the speed of your um, uh, daily commuting to work. Uh, and through, for driving through the city, uh, you uh, you change your uh, Volkswagen Golf uh, with Ferrari and, um, well, you, you cannot actually read the benefits of the speed of that car because uh, the, the streets are blocked. Yeah? So, uh, yeah. um, so that means uh, actually when, when we invest in IT, um, um, the benefits of, uh, of this investment unfolds over better operational processes. And um um, and there is the return happening. And um, simply by putting up the systems, um, you cannot realize that benefit. You, you need to have this process understanding and you need to have it continuously and you need to have it uh, in, um, in an overarching way. And um, mm -hmm. therefore, um, I, see, I see ERP systems and process mining uh, getting married. Right, right. Yeah, that's interesting. That's really interesting. And um, when it comes to, I guess, for those that are learning about, you know, they're listening to this conversation today and um, 
learning about process mining and uh, what it's, I guess, how it's transformed the, the process management space, um, how it's given us, you know, um, data-driven insights into what's actually going on um, within our organisation, within our process. It's identifying bottlenecks and idle times and weaknesses, weak areas, things like that. Um, where, where should they go to learn more about um, this topic? I mean, obviously, it's a, um, there, there is a point where you just need to jump in and, and start playing around with the technology and see what's possible. Um, but for someone that wants to learn more um, about, um, and maybe not process mining specifically, but maybe business process management, are there any sort of resources or um or people or, 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 or places, uh, websites you'd recommend people to go if they want to learn more about uh, business process management? So I know you had, um, you had, um, uh, you had Marlon Marcello on the show. So uh, maybe I don't have to say much about uh, that. There's a book uh, that we wrote <laughs> uh, on the fundamentals of BPM. Um, but maybe more specifically, um, what I did for my classes uh, at the university, uh, I, um, I recorded some uh, lit a series of little videos about what is in the fundamentals of BPM book uh, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, they're freely available on YouTube. So everybody's invited uh, to watch them. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing. Um, second thing, uh, what I felt, let's say from my academic point of view uh, is, is a very important vehicle to, uh, uh, to illustrate things um, together with practitioners. Uh, is that um, uh, we have uh, now the second volume uh, of a book called uh, Business Process Management Cases Out, mm -hmm. uh, where we collected um, some 20 new examples of how organizations are doing BPM. Right. Uh, and um, for practitioners, uh, that may be actually um, be uh, a very good uh, resource to see, oh, okay, this is how they did it. Mm. Uh, this is these are the problems that they encountered. Uh, these are the benefits that they reaped. Um, and um, these books um, I've been editing with uh, Jan von Brocker and with uh, Michael Rosemann. Uh, and um, there's a website uh, where we share information over over these books, and that is called uh, BPM uh, minus cases dot org. So uh, also there you find some material there. Um, yeah, and. Um, I'm very happy to be in touch. If somebody approaches me via LinkedIn or Twitter, just drop me a line. I'm interested and happy to discuss any BPM related topics with you. That's perfect. That's amazing. Well, Jan, thanks for sitting down with me and having this conversation today. Um, I've certainly been gleaning a lot and, and taking a lot of notes. Um, and I'm sure our audience um, will have learned a lot as well. Um, despite it being, you know, we can only squeeze uh, so much into a 45, 50 minute conversation. So um, I encourage everyone that's listening. Um, if if uh, you still have questions unanswered, please reach out to Jan, um, pop, pop a comment in, in, the, uh, in the comment field below um, or connect with Jan on LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, I'm sure, yeah, as you said, then he, he's um, willing and happy to, to connect and talk to you further but Jan thanks for sitting down and having this chat today I thank you very much we'll be in touch